my previous videos on the bath interferometer, I used a plano convex lens and, and cemented it directly to the beam splitter, eliminating um, two surfaces for reflection. However, uh, there was some discussion on cloudy nights about the best type of lens to use with the bath interferometer. They like to, to use a biconvex lens. They found a biconvex lens will give the least amount of spherical aberration, which is what uh, the lens introduces into the test. So I set up the bath in ZMAX and looked at the situation. So yes, they are correct in that a plano convex lens cemented to the beam splitter uh, has the worst amount of spherical aberration. But it depends on the, the size and F number of the mirror being tested. And in this example here, it's a 22.8 inch mirror uh, F3, and it has about 0.1798 waves of uh, spherical aberration. And that's about a little better than a fifth of a wave. And so if you use a biconvex lens with the same setup, this 22.8 F3 mirror, you only get about 0 0.05 waves of error introduced, spherical aberration. That's about a 20th of a wave, uh, which is insignificant. Now, if you're not making an F3, say you're making an F4, the, the spherical aberration is a lot less. In this example, the same setup. At F4, the spherical aberration is 0.073, which is a, not quite a 14th wave, a lot better. I would say here that it's not much of a problem. Now, one thing I did discover is that the best lens to use is actually a plano convex lens. If you turn it around and have the curved side face the beam splitter, in this case, I got uh, about 0.033 waves of uh, error, which is about a 30th wave. And that's uh, even better than the biconvex lens. So I'm probably not going to be doing any F3 mirrors, but I'm going to take uh, my lens off and reverse it and show you how I do that. Okay. So I'm going to mount my plano convex lens onto my um, beam splitter with a spacer so that the convex side faces the, the uh, beam splitter instead of vice versa the way I had it. And for a spacer, I, I made a little... Um, little spacer from a, a big pin and I, I just cut it with a razor blade and then I filed it but it has a about a seven degree wedge and um, that's so that the reflection off of the faces of the beam splitter don't come back on uh, on the image and they're out of the way but you do need to be careful that you have the um, you want to mount the spacer, um, the thin side of the spacer, either left or right, um, on the on the beam splitter, so the images are uh, either to the left or right, not up or down. And so, what I'm going to do is uh, first glue the spacer onto the beam splitter, and I need to know which the right one well, be sure you uh, glue it to the right side makes every make sure everything's clean I also need to mark this uh, spacer uh, thin edge uh, with a um, with a pencil I don't know if you could see it here or not but it's it's marked I'm going to glue that to the um, beam splitter I'm going to use some UV glue and take a toothpick and put just a thin layer of, of glue on one side of the spacer. 
All right, so I'm going to glue my spacer on. Um, one thing you can do to check, see if you have the thin side or not, take two pieces of, two small pieces of microscope slide glass that I cut and look at the reflection in it to see that it's, um, you know, the re reflection from a, a light will be up and down so that the one side will be the thin. So, to glue it on, I'm going to um, here I've got a microscope piece of microscope slide that I put a drop of UV glue on and I smeared it around to make a thin layer and then I'm going to basically just drop this spacer right on top of it and it'll be just enough to get it wet and the tricky part is to grab it and I got a bubble that's that's weird okay there goes bubbles gone now I want to set this down on my beam splitter in the right orientation and just drop it and don't move it around and then the little bit of little bit of glue will um, wet itself uh, and I'm going to glue that together right there you don't want to move it around because then you'll get glue and you could get glue into the the clear aperture of the 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 uh, where the beam comes through so now I'm going to zap that with a um, uh, UV LED that I've got and just and just uh, z zap it now once I have the um, um, spacer put on um, I'm going to glue on my lens my cleaned lens and I'm going to take my toothpick uh, and just kind of roll it in the glue and then just kind of roll it across the top of my spacer basically just put a very thin layer of glue as little as possible just enough to hold the lens and the tricky part now is to take my lens and set it on the spacer without moving it around and if you got enough glue on there it'll wick around give it a few minutes Check the centering. And if you've got any glue in the middle from moving it around, you can take it off and clean it and try again. I have had to do this more than once. But it looks like the glue is set. I mean, it worked around. So I can go ahead and um, use my UV light and cure this. Yeah. And here's the beam splitter and lens mounted back onto the interferometer. Now I could have used a separate mount for the lens and I suppose some people would rather do that. But I like to keep things simple. So this is the way I did it.